test. There we go. On this sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, he is risen. Welcome to Deerhurst Presbyterian Church, whether you are near here in the sanctuary right now or far, perhaps you're watching on a tablet while you're on vacation or you're in the comfort of your own living room. Welcome to Deerhurst Presbyterian Church this morning. I will remind you of just a few things. This insert is our announcements. So take that insert home with you and sit down with your calendar, whether it's on your phone or it's on your refrigerator, and make sure you get all of the dates filled in. Um, yesterday we gathered and there were 17 of us who worked on the front yard and made sure that this place looked welcoming and hospitable. Um, so thank you to those folks and uh, other dates of note. A couple Sundays from now is Pentecost. So wear your red. Come to celebrate the birthday of the church. Come to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we will have some words about that this morning. If you brought with you a joy or a concern that you would like to have in our prayers later in worship, make sure you text that to the number that's in your bulletin. My phone is right there. And I will take your text and I will make your joy, I will make your concern a part of our prayers in the bulletin. Um, Scott does this much better than I, and people respond to Scott much better than I, but I'm going to remind you that on the 12th is the church picnic. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. But if you say to yourself, I'm going to check my calendar and then I'll sign up, and you forget, you are still welcome to come. It's in a brand new place, just down the road a little bit, but right on the river, um, and if the weather is really nasty, we can truly be inside. So please put that on your calendar, come and join us. And if at the last minute you find out some very important thing that you were supposed to do wasn't happening, please come and join us anyway. Coffee hour will be there, worship will be there, as well as lunch afterward, and everyone is welcome. Um, the Deerhurst guinea pig party is back. Bob made the announcement last week, he wore his apron. Um, Come and be a part of it all. You need to be over 21. It's a BYOB kind of thing. Everybody is invited if you're over 21 and you can come and play and party with the sociables. Um, I'm not sure where that name came from, but it works. We're just being sociable one with one another for a little bit. Um, yes. Yes, that name I remember, but I don't know where the name Sociable came from. Okay, but it's a guinea pig party because it means that you bring something that you have thought you might like to make, but you have never made before. Or you order from that restaurant down the way that everybody has told you it's really wonderful takeout and order something you have never ordered before. But we're using each other as guinea pigs. And Carol Raimondo is, is the force to be reckoned with, again, um, organizing us and taking any kind of ideas that you might have um, for things that the sociables can do. And one of the things that is coming up is a Bison's baseball game. So I think, other than the fact reminding you that there was a mission outreach meeting immediately following worship, that's more than enough stuff and you can take everything else home with you. Um, Lori is going to still us. Lori is going to calm us down. Lori is going to help us prepare ourselves for the rest of worship as we listen to the organ meditation.
a loving God, a creator of the universe, a creator God who is creating still, creates sacred space, place, and time for us to be together. Let us join together in being called to worship. If we love the Lord, we will honor God's will and serve our neighbor. Come, let us cherish the Lord our God, keeping our neighbor close to the heart. If we love God's will, we will honor our neighbor and serve the Lord. If we love our neighbor, we will honor the Lord and serve God's will. If we say there is nothing broken in our lives, individually, communally, as a nation, we deceive ourselves in such a way that we're not talking about what happened on the east side. We deceive ourselves in such a way that we separate ourselves from what God wants most for all God's children. A sense of rest, a sense of renewal, a sense of hope, and truly a sense of forgiveness. Let us come together in, for, in asking God's forgiveness, in confessing our sin. Loving God, you know our weaknesses. You know the extent of our failure to love you and to love one another. You see the sincerity of our efforts as well. Look upon us who have been offended and lift up our hearts. Look upon us who have given offense and help us heal the hurt we have caused. As we willingly with your help forgive one another, we ask you to forgive us and fill us with your healing power and grace. Amen.
the sound of forgiveness in our sanctuary. God so loved the world, God gave God's only son, only child. God not sending the son into the world to pass judgment on the world, but through him, the world might be saved. Believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. Our sin is forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we will hear your words of scripture. Help us to interpret those words in the way that you have intended. As we will read about that all the nations praise the Lord Help us to understand it does not mean take up arms against nations that don't worship the way you worship. It means let everyone praise God. So we come to these readings today knowing that we need interpretation, that we need understanding. And so we ask you to speak to our hearts and our minds that we might understand as you have called us to understand. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our first reading today is Psalm 67. O oh God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
I read from John's Gospel this morning. I read from the 14th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Because a loveless world, said Jesus, is a sightless world. If anyone loves me, they will carefully keep my word and my father will love them. Who oh, move right into the neighborhood. Not loving me means not keeping my words. The message you are hearing isn't mine. It is the message of the father who sent me. I'm telling you these things while I am still living with you. The friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send at my request will make everything plain to you. The Spirit will remind you of all the things I have told you. I am leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace, I don't leave you the way you're used to being left, feeling abandoned, bereft. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. You've heard me tell you I'm going away and I'm coming back. If you love me, you would be glad that I am the way to the Father because the Father is the goal and the purpose of my life. I've told you this ahead of time before it happens, so then when it does happen, the confirmation will deepen your belief in me. This is the word of the Lord. I need help. Anybody who needs to move and to wiggle, anybody who wants to get up and come up here, I would love it. Come right up here. Good morning. A little bit of a reminder for you today so that when you walk into the sanctuary or if you're at home with family and friends and you're watching on TV and you see how the sanctuary is dressed, you'll have a little bit of a sense of what's going on. All right, so now I'm gonna need some help. All right, so um, come right up here, please. All right, so if you walk into the sanctuary, and you see, oh, 
this color. It means it's common time, it's ordinary time, it's where we spend most of our time. And so when I'm here or you see green, it means that we're following Jesus and we're learning how to follow Jesus. Now does anybody want to, else want to come up here and help me? Come on up. If we see blue, or purple, oh, did it fall off? No, sorry. It means we're getting ready for something. Blue and purple means we're either getting ready for Christmas or we're getting ready for Holy Week. We're getting ready for Easter. All right, I need somebody else. All right, come on right up here, please. All right. If you see red when you walk into the sanctuary, it means we're getting ready to sing happy birthday. We're getting ready to sing happy birthday to the church. We're getting ready to receive the Holy Spirit, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I need one other person. Come on up here, Corey. Oh, no, good. That's good. Tyler, yes, come right up here. Uh oh, I'm caught. If you come in and it's white, well, it means we could be having a baptism. It means we could be having a wedding. You're not getting married, are you? Okay. Uh, could mean a baptism, could mean a wedding, but it usually means Easter or Christmas. White is the color of celebration. Purple and blue are the color of getting ready. Red is the color of happy birthday to the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Green is ordinary time, common time. It's the kind of everyday work of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And now you might say, Reverend Steve, we know that this is a white season. It is Easter. We're moving our way through Easter, getting ready for Pentecost. And you would say, silly Reverend Steve, why are you wearing a purple shirt? Well, I'm wearing a purple shirt because I'm reminding all of us that we're getting ready for Pentecost. We're moving from Easter and Christmas, but this time Easter into Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So I thought I would wear people, purple to tell you all that we're getting ready for something very important. So thank you all. Then just stay right where you are and we're going to pray. Loving God. So many ways to know you, so many ways to know your love, so many ways to feel loved and useful and important in your kingdom. So we give thanks that we walk in and we say, oh, that's what we're doing. We're getting ready. That's what we're doing. We're celebrating. That's what we're doing. We're allowing the Holy Spirit to take us places we never thought we could go. That's what we're doing. We are followers of Jesus Christ. Loving God, for this day, for the gift of life, we give thanks. And we pray it all in your name who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Thank you. I need this one back. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And you can all go to church school.
when I was in college, at Hope College, shores of Lake Michigan, my junior year. I helped a friend who was a senior. He had a radio show. Hope College had this little tiny radio station that just went through the power outlets. So anybody on campus could plug their radio in and they could listen to the radio station. And we had an early morning show. And mostly, back then I was shy, and mostly Pete did all the talking. But we put on songs and we knew what kind of songs to play. If you needed to be able to go away from the microphone for a long while, there were songs like Stairway to Heaven that went on forever. And if you needed just something that would help you get to the news, a Beach Boys song would do. But we were always asking for requests. It was an early, early morning show. It was like 6.30 to 9.30, 10 o'clock. And evidently, the most requested songs had to do with folks who either had been broken up with or wanted to break up with someone else. So the most requested songs were usually Thank God and Greyhound You're Gone and How Can I Miss You If You Don't Go Away. Now, there seems to be some of that energy in this morning's scripture. Not thank God and Greyhound, you're gone, but how can you miss me if I don't go away seems to be what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, I'm telling you now where you can still hear this, but I'm going to go away. And if you love me, you're going to be happy that I go away because the friend, the advocate, the teacher will come. Now, why does Jesus need to go away, and why does the friend, the advocate, and the teacher need to arrive? We believe that Jesus was real, that Jesus was a historic human being that walked and talked, lived with the people of his time, and used the kind of illustrations in his preaching and teaching and healing that were relevant to the kind of struggles they were going through as people, a lot of them, who had been written out of the conversation, who had no power. And Jesus invited the powerless to feel empowered. But Jesus lived in a particular place, space, and time. So Jesus leaves so that the Holy Spirit can come and the preaching and teaching and healing and the promise to a new life that was his to give when he was here now becomes ours. And the preaching and teaching and healing that was relevant right then and there is going to be relevant right here and now. The Holy Spirit will come and the Holy Spirit will teach us how to take what Jesus gave us which Jesus says comes from my father, comes from the holy parent, and it will become relevant to what's going on right now. My wife was struck because on the interviews, having to do with what happened at the tops on the east side, a woman looked at the camera and said, why do they hate us? And I was talking to someone and she works with this organization that gets rides for people to go where they need to go. And she had taken some people over to get food. And she hopped out of her car and she was kind of waiting across the street while these people did their shopping. And a woman was standing there and said to her, do you have hate in your heart? She said, no. And then the woman tried to teach her how to dance. And the person said, look, I am really white and I am never ever gonna be able to dance but thank you. So the Holy Spirit comes. Someone asked me, who lives across the street from me, said, is your church doing anything having to do with the, what's going on on the east side? And I was thrown for a little bit because we haven't raised a particular awareness about physical things we can do because it seems like there's a whole bunch of energy being poured into that right now, and it's beautiful energy. And it may be that Buffalo, New York leads the way for a whole nation about how to deal with this kind of tragedy, this kind of absurdity, this kind of anger that seemingly came from the internet. But I thought about it. What can we do in response with the guidance of the Holy Spirit making the preaching and teaching and healing of Jesus Christ 
relevant right now. We can make sure that there is absolutely no hate in our heart. And that means we have to spend some time sitting in a corner someplace, breathing in and out, paying attention to Ruha, the Spirit of God, moving in and out of us. It means we have to pay attention. Maybe we have to pay most attention to where we have been taught to be angry, where we have been taught to hate, where we have been taught to judge, where we've been taught to say, yeah, it's good to help people, but they should be able to help themselves first. We pay attention to all of that. And we work very hard. We let the Holy Spirit into our lives so there is absolutely no room for hate in our hearts. And a miracle the size of Moses parting the Red Sea may be that a whole bunch of white, middle, upper middle class people may be able to dance. So, this morning, we are preparing ourselves, we're wearing our purple, and we're preparing ourselves for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Not next week, a couple weeks from now, the Holy Spirit will arrive, and everything that Jesus taught us about health and healing and wholeness and relevant inclusion will become real and relevant for the people God has given us. Amen. Dear Hearst Presbyterian Church, where are we in prayer this morning? If you're not doing anything on Thursdays, we gather on Thursdays and we've been sitting in the parking lot now that the weather is nice, but otherwise we move to the library and we say the names on our prayer list out loud. We just make sure we take turns. Sometimes we'll each be given a category and sometimes we'll just count five, but each name is said out loud. There's some power in the naming of that. So if you're not busy on a Thursday at seven o'clock, come join us in the parking lot or in the library. Um, these names each get the 
attention they deserve. I'm going to add some names to our list this morning. I'm going to say out loud the names for the week and the ministry prayers for the world, and I'm going to leave you to take home those with cancer and continued healing. Find a space at home so that you can have the list there and you can pay them some attention sometime throughout the week. We add to our prayers the east side of Buffalo, New York, leading the way in light of the tragedy that happened. We add to our prayers Beth Shepherd. June 1st, she has surgery. We pray that the surgery might go well. We pray that she might be cancer free on the other side of it all. We pray that your Holy Spirit be a part of the decisions that are hers uh, after the surgery on the 1st. We pray for Debbie Lamondola and her, well, we pray for Debbie. Debbie's sister Linda had a kidney transplant. We have been praying for both of them. And the transplant was not successful. Linda lost the kidney and then she died shortly after that. And so we keep Debbie in our prayers and we keep family in our prayers. And we keep all of the energy that we devote into trying to find healing for those we love the most. Um, the people of Ukraine, my mother returned home and they cheered and they fed her and she's a happy woman. Um, John Moore is back home waiting for more testing and evaluation. We continue to keep Jim and Alice in our prayers. Um, Jim has taken a little bit of a break and he's out camping this weekend. Um, traveling mercies for Addie and Bella um, from Kirsten. Uh, they're on their way to Italy and then from there on their way to New Mexico. Um, we keep the Reverend Amir uh, Tawandro, uh, pastor at Amherst, in our prayers. He's trying to get his family back home uh, from Egypt. Uh, his paperwork is in a row. His wife's paperwork is all ready to go, and now they just have to get the paperwork lined up for their son. Um, and uh, we keep Chuck Braun in our prayers, being treated for ALS. The COVID is behind him, but we keep uh, Chuck Braun, who is um, Pam and David Smith's son's father-in-law in our prayers. Allies and enemies, because Jesus said, ah, it's easy to pray for allies, pray for enemies. A fragile global economy and people who are retired worried with what all this up and down means in regard to them being able to enjoy their retirement. The faith filled and what they are going to sacrifice for their faith. Relief from racial and spiritual violence. These are sentences that are all of four or five words long, but they are a big deal. Um, and maybe they can cover us like the appropriate prayer shawl covers us uh, in, the, in the season of the church year we find ourselves. The poor, the unremembered, those living with mental health issues. On Thursday night, we also pray for those who don't know they have mental health issues. So it's very hard for them to find the help that they need, the relief from their anger and their isolation. And we pray for the recovering throughout the world. Let us come together in prayer. Lord, the wonderful thing about you is that you give us the power to be someplace to have been someplace and to be going someplace all at the same time. We are in the midst of the season of Easter. We have come out of a time of preparation we call Lent. We are in the midst of a season that is getting ready, getting us ready for yet something else. For a Sunday, we will wear red. For a Sunday, we will invite the Holy Spirit into our lives to take us where you need us to go so that we are more than anything else relevant to the anger, relevant to the fear, relevant to all the things going on around us, relevant to the real possibility of hope and joy that we can bring into our own lives and to other people's lives as well. So where, for where we have been as your people, we give thanks. For where we are as your people, we give thanks. 
for where we can go as your people, we are incredibly thankful. We pray for those who are grieving, and we pray for those who are grieving for those who are grieving. We pray for those who will help those who are grieving and will be there at the beginning. And then we'll be there in the middle, and then we'll be there when everybody else has gone home and they've started their own lives up all over again and people feel abandoned. And then again, the church will show up and the church will say, you are always loved and always known and always remembered. And the church may be a next door neighbor or the church may be a church friend or the church may be a family member far away that calls and says, how you doing? Lord, help us to be joy in the morning for friends and family, for a community, for a nation, for a world. Help us to be joy in the morning because that's who we are, because of whose we are. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's spend a moment in stillness. Let's spend a moment giving thanks for all that God has done for us and all that God can do in and through us. I'll pray. <laughs> Let us come together in prayer. Loving God, it dedicates a pretty fun word. We dedicate ourselves to you. And we dedicate our resources to you. And we dedicate everything that you have given us 
so that the world might know your love. Make your presence felt. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Receive the benediction. The blessing that sends us out into the world, waiting for the Holy Spirit to make who we are and whose we are powerfully and irrevocably relevant um, to everything that we see going on around us. The love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, communion, and support of the Holy Spirit, let it be ours this day, every day, now and forevermore. Amen. And there's coffee hour downstairs. <laughs>